Melioidosis was first discovered in 1911 by Alfred Whitmore and C. S. Krishnaswamy in Rangoon, Burma, now Yangon, Myanmar. They identified the disease in autopsy samples from a morphine addict who had multiple abscesses. This discovery led to the identification of the bacterium Burkholderia pseudomalae as the causative agent of melioidosis. Since then, Melioidosis has been recognized as a significant infectious disease, especially in tropical regions. Melioidosis is an infectious disease caused by the bacterium Burkholderia pseudomalae, and its transmission can occur through several routes. One of the primary ways people become infected is through inhalation of dust or water droplets containing the bacteria. This route of infection is particularly significant in areas where the bacteria are present in soil and water especially during weather events like typhoons or floods that can aerosolize the bacteria. Direct contact with contaminated soil or water is another common infection route. The bacteria can enter the body through open wounds, cuts, or sores, which is a frequent occurrence among individuals engaged in agricultural work or other activities involving soil and water in endemic regions. Ingestion of contaminated water or food, although less frequent, is also a possible route of infection. This can happen in areas where the bacteria have contaminated the local water sources. Person-to-person -person transmission of melioidosis is extremely rare, but there have been documented cases. Generally, not everyone exposed to Burkholderia pseudomalae becomes ill, but the risk is higher in individuals with certain health conditions such as diabetes, chronic lung or kidney disease, or weakened immune systems. These factors can make an individual more susceptible to developing melioidosis upon exposure to the bacteria. Melioidosis, a disease caused by the bacterium Burkholderia pseudomalae, manifests a diverse array of symptoms that can vary significantly in severity. One common presentation of the disease is pneumonia, characterized by coughing, difficulty breathing, chest pain, and high fever. Additionally, skin infections are prevalent ranging from localized swelling and redness to more severe forms like ulcers or cellulitis. In more severe cases, melioidosis can lead to bloodstream infections, marked by fever, headache, respiratory distress, abdominal discomfort, joint pain, and muscle tenderness. The bacteria can also target internal organs, leading to the formation of abscesses in the liver, spleen, or elsewhere, which can cause symptoms like abdominal pain, weight loss, and a general feeling of malaise. Though less common, neurological involvement can occur, presenting as headaches, stiff neck, disorientation, or seizures. Infection of joints or bones can result in localized pain, swelling, and fever. The incubation period of melioidosis varies widely, from as short as a day to several years, but symptoms typically manifest two to four weeks after exposure. This variability, along with the wide range of symptoms, often complicates the diagnosis of melioidosis. It can be easily mistaken for other diseases such as tuberculosis or more common forms of pneumonia. Individuals with pre-existing health conditions like diabetes, chronic kidney disease, or compromised immune systems are particularly susceptible to severe forms of the disease. Treating melioidosis involves a comprehensive two-phase approach, starting with an intensive phase followed by a prolonged eradication phase. During the intensive phase, patients typically receive intravenous antibiotic therapy, aiming for a rapid control of the infection. The most commonly used antibiotics for this purpose are ceftazidime or meropenem, with alternatives like imipenem or amoxicillin clavulinate sometimes employed. The duration of this phase usually spans about two weeks but can extend depending on the infection's severity and the patient's response to the treatment. Following the initial phase, the eradication phase commences, involving oral antibiotic therapy to eliminate any residual bacteria and prevent relapse. This stage often includes a combination of trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole and doxycycline, typically lasting three to six months. However, in more severe cases or when the infection affects the central nervous system, the treatment might be prolonged. The selection of antibiotics and the length of the treatment are tailored based on factors like the location and severity of the infection, the patient's initial response to treatment, and any existing health conditions. It's crucial for patients to adhere to the full course of treatment to ensure complete eradication of the infection and minimize the risk of relapse.
Supportive care is a vital component of the treatment, especially in severe cases of melioidosis. This may include addressing complications such as abscesses, which could require surgical intervention. Given the complexity of the disease, treatment should be overseen by a healthcare professional experienced in managing melioidosis, and patients should be regularly monitored to assess the effectiveness of the therapy and make necessary adjustments.